Hi guys, Swift here again to talk about the modules that we used for the combat session video from the start of the month. Since we've got a fair few people asking about them, what we'll do today is we'll go through the list of modules. I've got it relatively light for this world, but the thing about Foundry is that it's so very modifiable. So if you can think of a feature or a tool that might be useful to you, then I'd expect someone out there has already made it and gotten it working. Before I start, I should also mention that of all of these modules, the only one that actually required any setup was MIDI QOL, and that was about five clicks. The rest of these, however, were just plug and play, which honestly was quite a relief. I'm not one to shy away from endless fiddling if you need to do it, but it's very nice just to be able to install things and have them work out of the box. Um, so I'll go over what we need for MIDI QOL once we get down to it. So to start with, we've got 3D Canvas and its companion modules, the Map Making Pack and the Token Collection. 3D Canvas is the one that adds the 3D layer, which you can either use in a 2D scene like this one, just by clicking on the toggle 3D mode button over here. And what that does is just allows you to use any existing map in 3D, but with 3D minis, for example. You know, and it all works just fine. Uh, site works fine, the walls and etc. all already work from uh, 3D Canvas. Or of course you can uh, use a scene that was made for 3D Canvas, like the throne room scene. And this is the scene that we actually used to do the combat in. Um, I've been messing around with it a bit since then, throwing a bunch of tokens down, but those aren't related to the scene here. So 3D Canvas is a whole fully featured module with a massive suite of features and tools. Far too many to go over here. Uh, but you can get it by either subscribing to the Ripper93 or Bailey Wiki on Patreon. And I can see 3D Canvas, and then that comes with the map making pack and the token collection. Uh, the token collection being what I used for tokens like, you know, these guys over here, for, inst for instance. And the map making pack just containing a bunch of different assets. Um, I don't think there are any in this scene in particular, but there's all sorts of things like, you know, various types of trees, rocks, furnitures, walls, all that sort of thing. There's also the 3D Portraits module, which is also made by the Ripper 93, but is separate from 3D Canvas. This allows you to assign a 3D portrait to a token, uh, but I've been using it because it adds Hero Forge integration into 3D Canvas. Like I've been using the token compendium for NPCs like these guys over here, but for players and so on, We've been using um, custom minis from Hero Forge, just imported into 3D Canvas. Also on the 3D side, of course, there is the BaileyWiki 3D module, which adds a whole library of assets. Like everything in this map here is from the BaileyWiki 3D module in terms of the map itself. So like the floors, walls, furniture, tapestries, the pews, all that sort of thing. That's from BaileyWiki 3D. The other BaileyWiki modules, likewise, I use because they're basically a massive library of assets that I can use. So there's things like tiles, scenes, prefabs, all that sort of thing. So basically, I can create anything I need um, using all the assets in the BaileyWiki modules. For instance, the 2D map from the start of the session is from BaileyWiki. So aside from those, uh, going roughly alphabetically, the Argon Combat Hut is the one we got a lot of questions about. This is the one that allows you to have this slick HUD at the bottom. Like if I select uh, someone here and then toggle the HUD. And what this does is it gives you a really neatly organized menu of buttons to do all of the things that that character can do, along with things like tool tips to tell you what they can do. Very useful for a DM. Uh, and it's also, I find, really useful for spell casters because it gives you this nice UI with just all your spells laid out so that you don't necessarily have to constantly have your sheet open or keep referring back to it to remember what you've got prepared, for instance. Speaking of spells, that ties in pretty neatly to the next module, Automated Animations. And uh, this one's the one that's going to be triggering the fancy effects when we do something like, say, firing a scorching ray at some targets. Like if I just select three of these guys, untick that. We can see here we get the fancy effects at the caster targo here, and then we've got beams of fire at the targets, that sort of thing. That's all automated animations, or automated animations is the one that triggers that, because what it does is it listens for tokens using certain abilities, and then plays an animation depending on what it hears. Um, we've also augmented that with D&D 5e animations, that adds in all of the 5e spells and abilities and that sort of thing. And then those modules have an integration into 3D Canvas so that they have the 2D versions of all the spells and then also 3D versions as well. So they'll work just fine with 3D Canvas. And uh, the next one we're going to look at is the Carousel Combat Tracker, which is another one that we got a lot of questions about. This one's pretty simple. 
we'll just add these guys into combat here and then we've got the carousel appearing at the top so this is the module that adds these rotating uh portraits up here if i roll everybody's initiative and then just start the encounter then what this does is it'll uh, show you whose turn it is gives you things like tool tips when you hover your mouse over them and then you know as it goes on to the next turn it'll show you whose turn it is, who's next, who's just been, that sort of thing. And obviously the more people you add, the wider this can get. But you can configure it to be different sizes and all that sort of thing. Very useful mod. Um, I find that having a horizontal combat tracker along the top of the screen is a better use of space than the traditional kind of vertical one at the side of the screen. Uh, compendium folders is the next one. I believe this is actually in base foundry now. This is the one that gives you found, uh, folders in the uh, compendiums tab. Very useful, but I think it might be part of core now, so it might not be necessary. Uh, but if you're using an older version, then you know that's what that's for. DD 5e animations, as we've already mentioned that. DDB importer is another one that saves a lot of work. If you've got a player who's got a character on D&D Beyond, what you can do is just click this button on a PC sheet and then paste in the URL of the character in there. And then what that'll do is it'll just load everything in with all of the abilities, the name, hit points, saves, all that sort of thing, and just fill it out automatically for you, which is very handy. Next on the list is Dfred's Convenient Effects. This is a less obvious one, but this is the one that was doing things like like automatically taking conditions into account or things like you might have noticed during the battle uh, a skeleton automatically took disadvantage while firing at uh, Targo at point blank range. That was uh, Dfred's Convenient Effects that did that. So that adds a whole load of effects that just kind of automatically take things into account so you've got a bit less overhead to deal with as a DM. Uh, that's one of those must-have mods, I find. Dice So Nice is one that a lot of people are already familiar with. That's the one that gives these uh, 3D dice whenever you make a roll across the screen. And you can customize these and you can add effects. Like you might have noticed whenever Targo rolled a nat 20, there was a special effect on the dice, that sort of thing. So that's a really highly customizable module, one I quite like. And then there's also the dice tray just below it, which adds this series of buttons down here just for rolling dice. Um, not always necessary, but it's always nice to have just, you know, a button for rolling a quick dice, like you need to roll a d12. There you go. So dynamic effects using active effects or DAE. This one's a required module for MIDI QOL or quality of life. And that's the one that does things like automatically check if a roll is hit or automatically apply damage. Basically, a bunch of quality of life automations. Uh, speaking of, since we've mentioned MIDI QOL, what I'll do is I'll show you how I got that set up. For this, it was in the game settings, in configure settings. If you go down to MIDI QOL, and in the workflow settings, over in quick settings, this will let you configure the whole mod um, just with one button press. What I did is I just clicked full automation, as full button presses as possible. But of course, you can you know, tweak exactly how much automation you would like here. I know sometimes you might prefer if your players can roll damage, or maybe you want to be able to roll damage or be able to fudge things, that sort of thing. All very highly customizable, but overall more automation in a lot of cases with rolling dice is just very handy. Back onto the list, GB2A is a dependency for the 5e automated animations. That is a library of animated effects. It's mostly for the 2D side, though it's also a requirement for the 3D stuff, so we just have to have that installed. That's basically a bunch of um, really fancy animations for use with spells and stuff in 2D. Levels is a dependency for 3D Canvas that just allows that module to work. These three library or lib modules are dependencies. Uh, for anyone who isn't aware, a dependency is a module that you need installed for another module to work. Uh, generally, Foundry will automatically tell you if a module needs any dependencies, and then it will also be able to just automatically install and enable those for you. So you don't really need to be too concerned about them, but a lot of these modules are just there so that other modules work fine. Next up is Mass Edit, which is a fantastic module, one of those must-have modules, I think. That allows you to select a bunch of things and then edit them all at once. Like if I select these three, let me just end this comma over here. Yeah. I select these guys here and press shift E. I can then edit them all at once. Like say I want them all to have a light now, as bright as a torch. And I can do that and then just hit apply changes. And now all three of these are emitting lights, which, you know, 
you might want to do if you're in a dark scene and you know whatever uh, you can also press shift f to open up a search for things like say tokens like if you want to find say all tokens with the name skeleton say you could you know type in skeleton in there hit search and edit and then edit all tokens named skeleton on the map at the same time very useful if you've got a lot of monsters and you need to make a change to all of them for instance or if you've got a lot of tiles and you need to make a change to a bunch of them for instance it's basically very useful for any dm i think whenever you've been in a situation where you need to make a change to a bunch of things at once then you know that'll save you a lot of time midi qol we already mentioned select tool everywhere is one of those why isn't this in base foundry modules that adds a select tool to every menu like on the left here if you're in lighting mode and you want to be able to select lights without having to you know worry about accidentally creating lights out of nowhere you click on the select tool and then even if you click and drag you won't actually create any new lights so you don't have to worry if you just miss the light you're trying to select you know you just get access to it right there very useful mod sequencer is a dependency for automated animations Settings Extender is a dependency for modules that add UI elements. Socket Libs is a dependency for everything. Uh, the Ripper 93's Module Hub is a hub for the Ripper 93's modules. Basically, it'll keep them nice and organized and do things like tell you if they need updating and all that sort of thing. Um, if you use multiple of his modules, which you probably do uh, if you use modules a lot because his content is great, then, you know, that's a nice one to have, I think. Token Attacher is very useful as well. We use that a lot in BaileyWiki for making uh, prefabs. Basically, what this allows you to do is to stick stuff to modules, like, say, tiles or lights. We use it for instance, if I bring out prefabs here, and then I put down, you know, this torch prefab. That'll spawn in this here. And what the torch prefab actually is, is it's a token called Torch Metal Standing with a tile attached to it that is the torch you can see and a light attached to it which is the thing that's emitting the flame so i can just drag this token wherever i need them to be and it'll keep them all aligned and then whenever i'm ready to uh finalize it i can just go in delete the attachments and then delete the token and i'll be left with the torch that's what i did for all of these torches over here for instance basically a lot of stuff uh, so token attacher is great for making maps or making prefabs and generally saving you a lot of time and then there's wall height which is a dependency for a whole bunch of modules like 3d canvas that allows you to set the height of walls basically and that is all really uh that's all the modules i use for the combat session you might have saw at the start of the month the big three i saw people asking about were of course 3d canvas the argon combat hud and then also the carousel combat tracker so hopefully that has been informative to those of you who are asking about that and also i hope this has generally been informative to give you an idea of some of the modules that are out there at the moment um, like i said i consider this a fairly light module kind of loadout there are many hundreds of modules out there for any sort of purpose you could possibly imagine and for any sort of system as well so if there's any sort of feature that you think would be good if foundry had then there's almost certainly a module out there that will fill in that feature I think this is probably the biggest reason why Foundry kind of wipes the floor with every other VTT out there is because of just how modifiable it is and how kind of community driven all this is. But that's just modules in general. So hopefully that has answered some questions for you. Anyway, if there's any more questions or comments about this video or any of the stuff we've got on our channel here, then please let us know either with comments down below or in the Discord. Until then though, I'll see you all next time.